final picture here. So um, here we have the epiglottis. You can see it it's outlined sort of in here. And then there's continuations of mucosa down uh, along the quadrangular um, the membrane coming down and folding around the vestibular ligament. And that gives us our vestibular fold. So the mucosa and the ligament and the ligament together is the vestibular fold. Uh, sometimes people call that the false focal cords. Then we have a little loop out here the, to form the laryngeal ventricle, kind of a little gap in between the vestibular fold and then the vocal fold, which is composed of the vocal ligament and the overlying mucosa there, and the cricothyroid um, ligament. And this is what we would call the vocal cords or the true vocal cords. Mm. Yep. Yeah, so here is the vocal fold, so the mucosa overlying the vocal ligament. That's the true vocal cord. And then this, the vestibular fold, would be the false vocal cord. Sometimes those are referred to that way. Mm. Then, of course, there's the lay term of this is the voice box. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. All right, so when we have an endoscope down the, the larynx, we can see the superficial structures. So just point out some of the anatomy there. So out here, the tongue would be, so this is anterior up here. Um, epiglottis kind of folds up over the base of the tongue and it's elevated. And then we have the, the vestibular fold on top. And the space between the two edges of the vestibular fold is the rima vestibuli. And then we have the two vocal folds. And the space between them is the <coughs> rima glottidis. Or it trips me up every time. Okay. So here's a couple of real images. So the laryngeal inlet. And this whole area coming into the larynx. And you can see the uh, vestibular fold, kind of the, the darker one, and then the lighter colored vocal fold. <coughs> All right, so then we'll just go through some examples of different positions that the vocal <coughs> folds are in during different. Um, different activities and then I've got some videos to show of a um, in the scope examination that we can see it actually in uh, action it's pretty cool okay so during forced inspiration so um, breathing in um, <coughs> the vestibular fold and the vocal folds move apart so increasing the rima vestibuli and the rima glottidis that allows for free passage of airway into the lungs During phonation, so speaking, singing, whatever, making noise, um, the vocal folds adduct here, so you see them come together. And there's still a space between the vestibular folds. And then the vocal folds vibrate, um, much like a violin string would vibrate. Just, and uh, the pitch is changed by uh, that vocalis muscle tightening the vocal cords, and so just like as, as you tighten like a violin string, the pitch increases. The same kind of thing happens if you tighten the vocal, the vocal cord, uh, that vocal ligament, it increases the pitch. Okay. And what, what they can do, we'll see this on the videos, they can, they can use a strobe light at the end to like, illuminate the, uh, the larynx, and you can actually see the vibrations. It's pretty cool. Um, and then effort closure, so this would be like if somebody's coughing or they, they uh, look aspirated a little bit of something, the, the vestibular folds clamp shut to try to pro pro bleh, provide a barrier between the interior of the larynx and whatever's trying to get past it. So you can see them here closed up together. Okay, and then finally, during swallowing, um, 
they have a, a narrowing of the laryngeal inlet so that it kind of comes together <coughs> and then the epiglottis folds down to cover the rest of the laryngeal inlet. Okay, now.
Quick lot is here. Sophius would be back here. Okay, so now he's, she's turned on the strobe. So now we can see the vibrations. See them moving back and forth. See, they've stretched out a little bit, so you see they get a little bit longer as we go higher and higher. The vibrations go a little faster. would cause hoarseness of the voice, or if it's a complete paralysis, it can take the voice away completely. Um, you can also get hoarseness with just inflammation, <coughs> so having a sore throat, the voice is lost, it's because of inflammation of those vocal cords, they're no longer able to vibrate like they should. Okay, so uh, damage to what nerve would cause this kind of problem? Remember? Hmm? Nine and ten. Yep, nine and ten. So specifically this region, we'll talk about this in the lecture. This, uh, the vocal cords themselves and all the muscles of, uh, controlling the arachnoid cartilages are all the recurrent laryngeal nerves. 
So if you have damage to the, the, the recurrent laryngeal nerves anywhere along their pathway coming up from the thorax, you can have partial or complete loss of vocalization. Still no internet. Okay, so 
nasal cavities, the major features, uh, we have, whoops, the inlet, so the nares are the inlets to the nasal cavities. The two nasal cavities are separated by the nasal septa. And then the outlet into the nasal pharynx are the coanae, or coana singular. <coughs> All right. Um, additional features, so we have the nasal septum coming down and the floor of the um, nasal cavities, the heart palate. The roof would be right underneath the cribriform plate. We'll see that later. And then interiorly, we have the concha. So this is the superior concha, middle concha, and inferior concha. These are bony projections going out into um, the nasal cavity. And they uh, then have airflow passing through them. These are oversimplified. I'll show you a more accurate picture of one later. But basically what they're doing is they're increasing the surface area of the nasal cavity to <coughs> allow more, more surface to warm and moisturize the air as it's coming into the airway. Okay. Underneath each of the, the concha are the meatuses, so your inferior meatuses under the inferior conchas, concha, um, and middle meatus under the middle concha, inferior under the inferior concha. And then finally, we have a sphenoethmoid recess up here, which is the very top of the nasal cavity, just right up there, above the superior concha. All right, and then we have three region, regions. So the nasal vestibules and in inlet region. The respiratory region would be the main airflow pathways into the rest of the airway. And then finally, the olfactory regions, and this is where the olfactory epithelium is located. We've got the curvet form plate up here, the olfactory receptor neurons all up there. Mm. <coughs> okay. So then we have the four pairs of sinuses. So here we have the maxillary sinuses, the ones on either side of the nasal cavities, kind of underneath, um, front of the cheekbone area. Uh, the frontal sinuses up above the, the uh, nasal cavity, and, and this would be, right here would be where the orbit <coughs> is, so kind of tucked in between the two orbits. Um, the ethmoid cells are a bunch of smaller air cells, so collectively we call it ethmoid sinuses. And then the sphenoid or sphenoidal sinuses behind the upper part of the nasal cavity. So, here they are kind of placed on, on the skull. So, frontal sinuses um, are spaces within the frontal bone. Ethmoid cells are within the ethmoid bone. The maxillary sinuses are within the maxilla. And then you can't see it on this image, but the sphenoid um, sinuses are in the sphenoid bone. So that's where they get their names from. You can kind of see them here. So there's the frontal sinuses. It's kind of triangular shape here. There. This kind of lighter area here with some partitioning in it, ethmoid cells. The maxillary sinuses are kind of right along here. See that lighter area, or that darker area right through here. And again, we can't see the sphenoid on this image. So here is um, the sphenoid sinus right here embedded in the sphenoid bone. <coughs> okay, so then anatomy of the nasal concha. So here we have the superior up here, the middle and the inferior. The, the superior and middle are part of the ethmoid bone. And the inferior concha is its own bone. It's got its own thing going on. Here's a little more accurate image right here. So they're not just a little flap. So this inferior concha, concha can come down around. Um, looks like more like a shell. And then this has this process coming up 
here, the octonate process. Um, here is the middle conca coming down here, has a little curve there. And then a little tiny bit of the superior conca. Okay, so much more elaborate than what the images show previously. Okay, so then if we pull out just the ethmoid bone, so here we see the a simplified version of the uh, middle concha and the superior concha. <coughs> Those ethmoid cells are kind of right here. Um, we've got the orbital plate, so that, that medial wall of the orbit has got that little plate there, and then it's immediately medial to that is the ethmoid cells. Um, at the top, we have the gribriform plate. Again, that's where the olfactory epithelium is. And then the perpendicular plate is one of the bones that makes up part of the nasal septum. Okay. All right, and so then, tucked in right behind all of this <coughs> is the pituitary gland. And this little de depression, it has a three names so far that I've found. The hypophysial fossa, it's also called the pituitary fossa or the cella ter tersica. Um, so those are three names you might see for right, that location of the of the pituitary gland. And this is just a little depression in the top of the sphenoid bone. Now uh, sometimes you will get uh, like a pituitary microadenoma, so a small tumor in the pituitary, can really mess with hormonal regulation. So what they can do is they can come up through the nasal cavity, through the um, anterior wall <coughs> of the sphenoid sinus, and um, get a hole in through this, this wall of the, the sinus and actually access the pituitary gland from that angle to remove of the tumorous tissue. Okay, now you can see it here in this x-ray. Here's the sphenoid sinus, this lighter area here, and then a little depression there for that hypophysial fossa. All right, so here, this is where I wanted to use the tablet. I wanted to give you guys the tablet and see how you draw out trace out the, the edges. So, does anybody want the all-powerful pointer? <laughs> See if you can, if we can <coughs> identify where the different sinuses are. Can we move right? Mm -hmm. So maxillary would be where? Apparently, things 
did not go well in his, his or her life. Um, again, here's the, the septum here. So here's the orbit. Here's the, na the nasal septum. You can see it's deviated here. Here's the inferior concha, the superior, or the middle concha here, inferior here. You can see, again, lots of congestion. A lot of times that deviated septum will not allow for fluid drainage and <coughs> or, or inflammation infection to occur in the, those regions. Here is a um, horizontal plane image. So you can see we also have deviation this way. If you added a few more curves, so about three more, you'd have my set. Good. <laughs> Okay, hmm. so external nose, um, <coughs> just a couple of things I want you to know. There's the nasal bone and the frontal process of the maxilla bone here. And that per, uh, composes most of the bony structure. The rest of it is cartilage. End of story. Okay, so you don't need to know the names of the cartilages, just the fact that most of the external um, nose is structurally supported by a cartilage plate. All right, nasal <coughs> septum. We already talked that about the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. That composes part of it, but here you can see the perviform plate up here, <coughs> perpendicular plate. Um, the vomer bone here <coughs> composes part of the septum, and then we have the septal cartilage. Again, large portion of the <coughs> septum is cartilage. <coughs> right. All right, if we look at the, the floor of the nasal cavity, so this is the <coughs> hard palate. There's two bones that make up the hard palate. Here is the horizontal plate of the palatine bone. And then we have the palatine process of the macular <coughs> bone. Those two make up the hard palate there. And we have the soft palate sticking out back here. <coughs> All right, so then, uh, remember we've got all those sinuses that have uh, openings into the nasal cavities and that allows for free airflow between the sinuses <coughs> and the nasal cavities, again, Increasing surface area <coughs> to allow for more surface area, warming and moisturizing the um, the air, and then also another another purpose of those of those sinuses, those air spaces, is to uh, decrease the weight of the facial bones. So it's not quite so much to keep our head up upright. Doesn't take quite as much work. So some days, <coughs> pretty sure it's all full. Okay, so where are the openings? So in the nasopharynx area, kind of right at that border between the nasopharynx and the nasal cavity, we have the opening of the pharyngeotympanic tube. Remember that's our eustachian tube coming from the middle ear. Uh, up in the sphenoethmoid recess is where we have the opening of the sphenoid sinus here. Uh, tucked in underneath the superior that superior meatus right in there is uh, opening of some of the posterior ethmoidal cells. <coughs> then we have in the uh, middle meatus, underneath that middle concha, we have several openings. We have the opening of the maxillary sinus and the opening of the anterior ethmoid cells and frontal sinuses. And then finally, underneath the inferior concha and that inferior meatus, we have the opening of the nasal lacrimal duct, bringing the, the excess tears from the eye down and out into the nasal cavities. Just why no nose to cry and annoying. <coughs> okay, any questions? Okay. Arterial supply. So, <coughs> we have, again, branches from the um, external parotid, and we also have branches from the internal parotid. Um, so, external parotid via the maxillary artery comes in and supplies the sphenopalatine artery. And then the ophthalmic 
artery branch off the internal, supplies the anterior and posterior ethmoid arteries. So, all of those. Um, there's a lot of anastomosis, especially in this region here on the nasal septum. So this is lateral, this is medial. And this is actually an area prone to nosebleeds because of all those anastomoses. There's just a lot of vasculature in that area. And you know, also it's an area that tends to get dried out a little bit if with um, insufficient <coughs> water intake and really very dry air. So very often nosebleeds come. Okay, we have a whole network of veins that um, are draining the nasal cavities. They drain to three different things, the cavernous sinus, though some people say that that's not always present. Um, the pterygoid plexus, we talked about, and then the facial vein. So three regions, <coughs> the three major vessels draining <coughs> the nasal cavities. And then finally, my favorite part is the nerve innervation. So sensory innervation is through hmm, the uh, ophthalmic nerve for the anterior ethmoid nerve. So anterior ethmoid nerve here, branch off the ophthalmic, the posterior lateral nasal nerves, and the uh, Nasal palatine nerve are branches off of the maxillary nerve. Mm -hmm. So the nasal palatine <coughs> and the <coughs> uh, posterior lateral nasal nerves, both inferior and superior, are branches of the maxillary nerve. Anterior ethmoid nerve is a branch of the uh, ophthalmic <coughs> And then finally, we have the <coughs> olfactory bulb here. The olfactory nerve actually <coughs> this way. And we have the septal branches coming through. These are the um, axons of the um, na um, olfactory receptor neurons carrying olfactory sensation from this Phenoethmoid recesses and then into the olfactory bulb into the brain. All right, and then finally lymphatic drainage. So we have drainage to the retropharyngeal and upper deep cervical nodes. So here, right behind the uh, mandible there, and then drainage to <coughs> the submandibular. Nodes, and then that all will then, of course, drain into the deep cervical nodes down the jugular trunk and um, join in with the, the larger lymphatic vessels before joining into the subclavian. Okay. okay. Any questions? <coughs> no? All right. So then. We'll have our quiz, lab quiz tomorrow. Friday, we've got hopefully we'll get to the